Well, um, what we're going to do is we're going to put one of these images into a cache. We're going to kind of fill up a cache with the slices from our renders so we can get to them later. And we'll see why that's useful. So here in my network, I'm going to go ahead and start by, there we go, adding a select top. And you'll see, right, it was so important that everything was named null final. And part of that is we're going to go ahead and put a path in a path, base one slash null underscore final. And that is going to grab for us that last null here in our chain. Now, because we happen to know that all of them are named null final, the only thing we have to change is this digit, and we're going to be able to move through all of our bases. Pretty slick. I know. It makes me excited. Um, so let's scoot this up here. Now, we're going to use a fit top. And part of the reason we're going to use a fit top is, you know, we don't need all the resolution that these things are, right? These are, um, their output resolution is 1280 by 720. And I want to kind of ha hold on to a few pieces of these in memory in a cache that we can get to, but I don't need them to be full res. I only need them to be a much smaller subset of that size. Now, I've figured that size out already. I know I tricked you. I hadn't tricked you yet, but... I thought ahead in this process, um, and w while it's tempting to kind of uh, do the part that would inform the size of this first, uh, my intuition, hopefully, is that as you're going through this process, uh, it'll make sense here in a second. I know it's frustrating to kind of work out of order, but we'll see why that's important in a moment. Okay, so in our fit, we're going to go ahead and set the resolution on the common page of this to be 280 by 160. Excellent. Right, and if we middle mouse and view that, that's much smaller. That's great. And then finally, we're going to use a cache top. And we're going to go ahead and plug our fit right into our cache. So our cache needs a few things um, to kind of get set up here. So what I want to do is I want my cache size, right, the number of things that are in this cache, I want to be equal to the number of bases that I have here. Now, I, I could write some Python to do that. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do that today just because uh, it's all... Um, um, yeah, you know, we could, okay, let's say, yeah, all right, you know, let's, let's practice our Python. It'll be good for us. Um, and what we're going to do for that is we're going to use a special method called find children. Um, if this feels like it's really gross to you, you can just go, boom, six, great, I love it. I don't even have to think about anything else. Everything is beautiful and lovely. Uh, if you want some practice at what this means, which is great, uh, you should you want, should want some practice in this. Uh, what we can do here is we can look at our. Well, actually, what we want to do is we want to look at our base. We're going to look up the Python here. Now, I happen to already know this thing because I love this particular method. Find children. We can see this is the documentation for it. Okay, uh, what, it, what does it do? So an example would be, I want to find all wide chops. Okay, great. Well, in this case, right, what does that mean? That means all chops that have a width that's larger than 200. Or you could find all comps that have a particular quality to them. Or, in our case, we can use an eval dat, right? This is a nice kind of tricksy way to practice this first. We could find all of the components here that are bases. Now, we're lucky, right? Because uh, all of our networks, all of our render networks live inside of bases. So it's nice and handy for us. So we could do parent dot find children 
we're going to need some parentheses. Let's scoot this over. We can see here that we get a lot of them already out the gate. Woohoo! That's pretty nice. Uh, our type should be equal to base comp. I think that's right. Excellent. And we need to specify depth. The depth is equal to one. That's all in this part of the network. And this is a list. So what we actually need to do is we need the length of this whole shenanigan. Six. So we could copy that. And we could come on over here to our cache. And in our cache size, we could set that to be our parameter there. Now that's not super efficient in the long run, but that's a fine way to kind of practice um, what that means. This would be a great kind of technique if what you wanted to do was build something that could adapt to the addition of more bases, right? So let's say that I ended up in a situation where I wanted to keep adding these, right? And we'll see that our cache is keeping up with us, which is, that's great. Now we're not gonna do that today. That's just kind of a really handy way to think about, well, how do you build something that can adapt over time? Now there are some catches to that, unfortunately, and that's okay. But for right now, this will kind of get us started. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that set just like that. I'm gonna flip off the active parameter on our cache because I don't want it actually cooking at the moment. Um, because what I want to do is I want to go through our cache and I want to fill it up one slice at a time. Uh, and I know that's, you know, that might feel a little bit weird. And that might not make a whole lot of sense yet, but I promise it's going to make sense here in just a hot second.